Whenever you're clear coating your products, you want to place them on the tray so that once you've applied the clear coat, you can move the item without ever touching it. You want to keep six to eight inches away as you spray and don't move in an arc pattern. So don't move the gun like this as you spray. You want to try to keep the linear lines that go back and forth in a straight motion. You want to apply enough clear coat to evenly cover the surface, but you don't want there to be enough that if the surface is vertical, it'll start to run. When you're spraying your part, it's important to start to spray off to the side, move across, and then stop the spray off to the side. You don't want the initial splatter that comes out from the front to hit your part. So you want to start off to the side, move past your part, left and right, and then release the spray when you're off to the side. If you spray too close to the part, you'll get runs. You'll have heavy spots in a small area, so it'll cause it to run real bad. If you're too far away when you spray, some of the mist will dry before it reaches the part. It'll crystallize into small particles, and you'll have a real grainy pattern. So six to eight inches is ideal. Starting off to the side, sweeping back and forth, until the part is evenly covered. I'm going to clear coat along the axis this way. If I were to do it this way, as I spray on the front, the back would be further away, so it causes it to have uh, particles in the back. So if you spray along the long axis this direction, it helps. So you're going to want to apply three coats of clear coat. After every coat, give it about 20 to 30 minutes to dry, depending on how hot or cool it is in the lab. Uh, after you've applied three coats, three decently thick coats, uh, you're going to want to let it dry for at least six to eight hours, so basically overnight, and then you're going to buff it with steel wool. So uh, there should be piles of steel wool around the lab. Uh, when you apply the clear coat, it's going to cause the wood grain to raise a little bit. You're going to have a little bit of bubbles, and it's going to have a slight orange peel effect. So to get rid of that, uh, once it's fully cured overnight, you take the steel wool and you just run it along. It might take two or three minutes to get a decent sized area buffed out, but you should notice a very visual difference from where you buffed and where you haven't. You should see uh, the orange peel effect on the unbuffed area and then the buffed area should be smooth. Um, once you've steel wooled it, you're going to want to take the air hose outside remove all the uh, steel wool that you can. If the product isn't fully cured, so if you only let it dry for two to three hours and you try to steel wool the product, uh, some of the steel wool will embed itself into the clear coat. Um, the clear coat is water-based, so the steel wool will rust and you'll end up with black and rusted marks all over your parts. So allow it to cure fully overnight before steel wooling it. You'll want to do three coats, steel wool it, three more coats, steel wool, and then one final gloss coat to get a shiny surface. The care and maintenance of the clear coat gun is very important. Uh, we end up breaking a lot of guns every semester. We'll go through two or three. Uh, at least one will be completely destroyed. So when you're using the clear coat gun, if there's not someone directly behind you, go through and clean the entire thing. 
if there's a constant line of students currently using the gun, um, at least every other person should flush out the system with clear water. So we'll have one cup here with clear water. No uh, clear coat should ever go in this. It should always be crystal clear water. So if the person in front of you didn't clean it and there's a line of students, you should clean it yourself. All you have to do to remove it, turn the gun upside down, drop the canister off with the clear coat, install the one with water, and then just spray it for five to six seconds. And clear out the gun. So we're just flushing out any of the clear coat that's left in the system. Remove it and then reinstall the clear coat. And then spray off any excess water that's in the system before clear coating your product. Um, for maintenance of this, there's nothing really you should be doing. Uh, as you see me do, it, was, it had been sitting here about two minutes and it already dried up. So the only thing you can really do is just brush off the front here. If you can't rub it off with your fingernail, it's something stuck internal or it's locked up or there's something that's went through. So. Do not attempt to clean or remove anything that's yourself. Just come get me. I'll repair the gun or I'll trade it out with one that's properly working. So. Test it before you use it. If there's someone directly behind you, uh, one of the two of you should have cleaned it out with fresh water. If there's no one behind you and the gun is being done for the day, we're going to do the same sort of thing. We're going to remove the clear coat. Install the water canister, spray it for five to six seconds, and then if it's done and no one's directly behind you, we'll go ahead and turn off. We'll turn off the air and then turn off the fan and the light. Once you've done that, you want to dump the rest of the clear coat back into the main container. And then the very last thing we want to do is to take the canister and the filter cup and wash them out. It's really important that we wash out the filter area. Um, if this isn't cleaned, when the next person goes to use the gun and they try to assemble it back, that will be dried up with hardened resin and then the clear coat won't flow through that filter. If you remove the filter, any of the small particles and gel chunks in the, the tank will go into the gun and it will clog the gun. So do not remove the filter. I've got a bunch of them. Again, just let me know. If the filter is dried up, I'll replace it. It will not dry up if after everyone is finished, they take this to the sink and they wash this out. They dump this contents out and wash this cup. So for the air hose with the clear coat gun, uh, as with most air fittings, if the on off switch is in line with the tube, that means it's on. When the uh, lever is perpendicular to the tube, that turns off the air supply. Uh, we want to keep the air supply off because if we leave the air supply on throughout the day, uh, the pressure will tend to break down the seals and by the end of the day, if this is not turned off and it's been on all day, uh, the pressure will start to work its way around all the O-rings. It breaks down the seals quicker. It's also important that the PSI be around 20 to 25. So students tend to turn this up throughout the day. Uh, it won't. If it's not spraying, it won't make it spray better. So uh, do not adjust the air yourself. Um, this one is set on full open because I have the main air supply with a better regulator set to 25 PSI. So do not adjust the air supply and do not try to adjust the, uh, the liquid feed and the air feed. So these are adjusted right now. Uh, they will do just fine. So if it's not spraying, it's not the adjustments and it's not the main air. It's something with the gun. So just come and get me if the gun is not functioning properly and we can try to fix it.